Here's your news for November 22nd, 2019. We're looking at the WWE 2K20 video game today, as the latest installment in the franchise failed in more ways than one. After being released last month, the game was heavily criticized for a series of technical flaws, and yesterday, 2K released Update 1.03 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. According to a tweet by the 2K20 page, the new patch will address some of the concerns made by players who rallied behind the fixed WWE 2K20 hashtag, which made international news. There are still plenty of areas that are still getting fine-tuned by the developers, so hopefully those gamers getting the game for Christmas won't have as many issues. In this latest patch, it seems various issues, including behavior of cloth and the game's constant soft locking and crashing have been resolved, and a full list of the updates can be found at the WWE 2K20 website. We're looking ahead to tonight's SmackDown as the final show before Survivor Series has plenty to offer. Ahead of their Universal title match this Sunday, champion Bray Wyatt and challenger Daniel Bryan will have a confrontation, as Bryan will summon Wyatt to the ring. This match came about after The Fiend attacked Bryan backstage a few weeks ago, and was confirmed last week when the Eco Warrior challenged Wyatt on Miz TV, a challenge that the champion accepted with the Yes chant. Roman Reigns, Mustafa Ali, and Shorty G will team up against King Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode on tonight's show which will be the first of four straight nights at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois. After SmackDown tonight, the venue will host NXT TakeOver War Games on Saturday, before Survivor Series on Sunday, ending with Raw on Monday. One name that hasn't been announced for any of these shows is Hulk Hogan, but that doesn't mean the Hulkster is finished just yet. After wrestling his final match in TNA, Hogan has admitted that he doesn't want his epic career to end like that, and while speaking to Wrestling Academy this week, he spoke candidly about wanting one more match in WWE. He said, I've been talking to Vince McMahon. History is very important to me. I've had a very long career and part of my career was with a very, very small company and a very gracious lady called Dixie Carter in TNA, and I had one of my, actually my last match there. That's hard for me to live with. I want my last match to be with WWE. I've been pushing and negotiating very hard and I'm actually healthy. I'm in very good shape, a little bit under 300 pounds, maybe 295 pounds. I'm getting ready. I'm going to have one little tiny surgery on my back, maybe take me a couple of months to recover, but I've got my eyes set for WrestleMania. The one I'd love to get in the ring with if I only had one person would be Vince McMahon. I'm very sick of his stuff too. Hogan recently posted an image of some of the big hardware removed from his back, and though WrestleMania is still many months off, it's clear that the former world champion wants a match at the show of shows. The Wednesday Night Wars continued on this week, and for the first time ever, it was NXT that scored the most viewers over AEW Dynamite. NXT averaged 916,000 viewers, up 22% from last week, and managed to get a .30 rating in the 18-49 demographic, the best number since the start of the wars. For comparison, AEW Dynamite trailed with 893,000 viewers and finished with a .39 rating in the 18-49 demographic. The eighth most popular show on the night on cable, NXT finished 13th, as Dynamite defeated NXT once again in every demographic except the over 50s. It's logical to assume that the advertised invasion of Raw and SmackDown superstars helped bring in fans who don't usually watch NXT, as the show ended with Triple H saying that there was an open-door policy for the gold brand. Dynamite was the strongest with males aged 18 to 49, grabbing a .52 demographic compared to NXT's .39, though that was closer than the two shows usually are. Though NXT won this week, it didn't take long for AEW World Champion Chris Jericho to make fun of this, poking fun at WWE's statement where they congratulated AEW. After the successful debut of Dynamite on October 2nd, WWE congratulated their competition, but said that the war was a marathon, not a sprint, a line copied by Jericho in a recent tweet. Many fans also pointed out Triple H saying that NXT would stay true to itself, and how this line seems to be incompatible with the recent influx of Raw and SmackDown superstars as part of the invasion. This is certainly the attitude held by Jericho, who said that this week's episode wasn't a true NXT show in response to a fan. 
With the invasion coming to an end this Sunday, it'll be interesting to see if they continue to use Raw and SmackDown stars next week or whether it'll be business as usual in NXT. One star nobody should expect to see is ACH, as the former Jordan Miles is no longer under contract, according to Fightful. A t-shirt for Miles that the former NXT superstar saw as an allusion to blackface made him the center of controversy just a few weeks ago, and though the shirt was pulled down as soon as the issues were raised, the damage was already done. Online, Miles said how WWE doesn't care about black people before describing the Jordan Miles brand as his slave name and is now officially out of WWE. Releasing a photo of himself signing what appears to be release papers, the NXT breakout tournament winner followed this with a message to Vince McMahon, saying the boss can't hold him down anymore. ACH has already started taking bookings on the independent scene, which may clash with the 90-day no-compete clause that many superstars have, but it seems the situation of him being in the company wasn't good for either party, and both WWE and ACH seem better off as they go their separate ways. It's been just over a week since the return of CM Punk to WWE programming, and the best in the world's comeback has got plenty of fans and members of WWE talking. Recording his After the Bell podcast before Punk was able to voice his opinions on WWE's current product, Corey Graves has been quite open about losing touch with Punk over the years, and said he was shocked to see the former world champion on backstage. He said, I know I was shocked, everybody was shocked, and everybody has an opinion, everybody has a thought. My thought is this, it's a great move by Fox. Fox wants to get viewers and wants to get eyes on FS1? What better way than to get the man whose name is still chanted in arenas worldwide? one of the most controversial superstars ever in our business, CM Punk, back on WWE's backstage as a periodic reporter. I'm not entirely sure what the role is, I'm sure by the time this airs he will have been on and the world will know significantly more than I do at this point. This, of course, has fueled rumors and speculation plenty. Is Punk coming back to the WWE fold? Is he going to compete again? Punk himself has said he's not interested in wrestling anymore, Graves continued. But as his appearance alone proved, you can never say never in the WWE. Though Punk won't be on backstage every week, we'll still likely see enough of him that he continues to make a big impression. And while the Second City Savior has made his feelings on competing in the ring again clear, we all know never to say never. Punk is already being advertised for next week's episode, and while the ratings have shot up thanks to him, they're still not reaching what the company had hoped. After the premiere of Backstage drew just 49,000, the second episode, which saw Punk return, did 100,000, while the latest episode, where Punk spoke his mind, did an impressive 180,000. According to Brad Shepard, who spoke on the Oh You Didn't Know podcast, the WWE was expecting a much higher figure, as he said, I was told by a source in WWE today that there was a lot of talk at headquarters of the ratings for WWE backstage and how they didn't even break 250k, so they're not happy about it. Only time will tell whether backstage is able to hit that 250,000 mark, but if Punk continues to make headlines for the show, it may be a question of when, not if. Cain Velasquez news now as the former UFC heavyweight champion continues to prepare for his full-time start with WWE. Despite coming up short at Crown Jewel, Velasquez is scheduled to compete at the November 30th Super Show in Mexico City, and was spotted this week in the company's Performance Center, according to PW Insider. It's clear that Velasquez is taking his role in WWE seriously, and while some fans still don't like the idea of another UFC star coming to WWE, Velasquez isn't letting the haters get to him. With WrestleMania 36 being just a few months away, the WWE Universe is already speculating on who may be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and one name who comes up every year is Demolition. A tag team that held the record for the longest championship reign until it was broken by the New Day, the fact that Axe and Smash aren't already in the Hall of Fame is shocking to many, but doesn't seem too shocking to the former champions. While speaking to Wrestling Inc., both Axe and Smash shared different opinions on being inducted. As Axe said, We just have to figure out, we have to make enough money to buy a ticket. We can't get in without buying a ticket. It seems Axe believes the only way they'll get into the Hall of Fame ceremony is if they buy a ticket, but Smash seemed more optimistic, saying, You never know what's going to happen. Part of the reason why they may not already be inducted is that Demolition was part of a concussion lawsuit against WWE, and while the case has been thrown out, it seems the tag team have burned their bridges. 
WWE was also pretty eager to break the team's record as the longest reigning WWE tag team in history as well, as the chances of a demolition induction are pretty slim. We've got some women's division news next, as while Alexa Bliss might have a problem with hackers, she doesn't seem too worried about them doing too much damage. On Twitter, one fan wrote that he has a plan to hack her Twitter and Instagram accounts, and while we don't know why this fan wants to boycott the former champion, he did foolishly tag Bliss in the post. Seeing the tweet, the petite powerhouse replied with a simple LOL emoji, simply daring the would-be hacker to try and get into her social media. Bliss has shown in the past that she has nothing to hide, as she's previously showed off everything on her Snapchat because someone kept trying to break in. We certainly hope this hacker is unsuccessful in getting into Alexa's account as she has a right to privacy, but even if they do, it seems the former Raw, SmackDown, and Women's Tag Team Champion isn't afraid. Back to NXT news now, as this week's show saw an incredible return by The Revival, who came up short against the Undisputed Era in non-title action. Despite the loss, Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson received a rousing ovation from the crowd, who chanted please don't go at the former champions. This show of respect took place during the commercial break, but it was still a pretty cool moment that WWE didn't waste any time putting on social media. Speaking of Raw stars invading NXT, Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch kicked off this week's episode of The Gold Brand and will fly the flag for the red brand against SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley and NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler at Survivor Series. Although her core focus is her fellow champions, the man did have an altercation with Rhea Ripley on this week's NXT, and it was Triple H who gave a subtle threat that Ripley will be a thorn in the man's side for many years. Unsurprisingly, Lynch fired back in her usual way, taking to Twitter to call out the game and said that whoever he sends after her, he shouldn't expect back. As the only woman to win a WrestleMania main event, and the only woman to defeat Ronda Rousey in WWE, Lynch is naturally confident going into this Sunday's huge triple threat, but given the talent of all three women involved, the real winners will be the fans. Some have suggested that the match could be the main event, as Brock Lesnar likes to get his matches done early, and Bray Wyatt vs. Daniel Bryan isn't part of the brand warfare storyline. The women's triple threat is also the poster for the show, and if we had to make a prediction, our money is on the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Back to AEW next, as the show's dark tapings were headlined by Kenny Omega's first AAA Mega Championship defense. With Sean Spears' as guest commentator, Trent Beretta defeated Pentagon Jr. while Awesome Kong made quick work of Leva Bates. In her third AEW match, Shanna picked up her first win against Big Swole after making her debut against Kikaru Shida on the October 30 episode of Dynamite. In the main event, Kenny Omega retained his title against Jack Evans, and these matches will air at 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, November 26th, before the special Thanksgiving Eve edition of Dynamite the very next night. Back to WWE now, and it's no secret that the recent love triangle on Raw has had its fair of haters, and one person who isn't a fan of Lana is Zelina Vega. After Vega described herself as the best dressed on Raw, Lana snapped back with her own Versace-inspired wardrobe, which forced Vega to bring up the horrific promo made by the Russian this week. When Lana tried to express her restraining order against Rusev, she initially said her husband couldn't come within 90 miles, then changed it to 90 days, before finally getting it right at 90 feet. Interestingly, Lana and Vega have clashed in the ring before, and if this Twitter war continues, it could be a matter of time before we see them back in the ring. And finally, today we're focusing on AEW, as a particular sign has made some pretty big headlines. On the hard camera of this week's edition of Dynamite, one fan could be seen with a Suck It Vince sign, and this brazen statement was quickly approved by AEW Vice President and wrestler Cody Rhodes. Speaking to the crowd before the AEW dark matches were taped, Cody told the crowd, I cannot say anything, I think the sign says it all, and gestured to the sign, which got a big pop from the crowd. It wasn't long until the entire arena was chanting, Suck It Vince! as Cody and his company have once again fired a shot against the WWE.